As autumn gives way to winter, brothers Chris and Casey Kiefer are drawn to the wild places on a live to hunt, hunt to live mission, dropped with very little to rely on but each other. Each new season brings with it a new arena and new challenges. Together, the Kiefer brothers have faced angry predators, extreme hunger, impassable terrain, and volatile shifting weather patterns. They've explored hundreds of miles of desolate mountain ranges, unsettled tundras, raging rivers, and the unpredictable perils of territories where few are willing to go. All for the love of the hunt, to test themselves, to test each other, not to prove anything to anyone, but to feed the fire inside. This is Dropped. Amazing grace, what sweet sight. See her dressed in white. I once was lost, but now I'm found through her amazing grace and a soft cotton lace. Northern Saskatchewan, the land of living skies, landlocked and sparsely populated, this diverse province has a reputation of being equal parts beautiful and brutal. The grasslands of southern and central Saskatchewan surrender to the thick boreal forests of the north, where black bears, wolves, and moose patrol towering thickets of spruce and pine. This is where the Kiefer brothers will carve out a living for the next 30 days. With a change in arena comes a change in the rules. The brothers have access to thousands of acres of Canadian wilderness by way of a remote lake. They've been afforded a motorized fishing boat, just big enough to transport their gear and a limited supply of fuel reserves. For the duration of their journey, this boat will be their lifeline, allowing them to search for the lake trout, northern pike and walleye that soar through the depths beneath them, while providing the opportunity to scout and hunt the vast expanses of the game-rich northern timber. The Kiefer brothers hold tags for a moose and a black bear, but a tag is far from a guarantee. As Chris and Casey make their final descent, reality sets in. With a bird's eye view, they take one final look at the dawning task ahead. It's a familiar feeling, excitement, anticipation, the realization that when the drop happens, survival mode begins. I think we're good here. I think I've gone through a pretty much think we have everything. We'll know once we start passing it in there, but we should have just about everything, so. Okay. Uh, well, let me check with this and see if we can get this motor started. Yep. That's a uh, key component to what we're doing here. Yeah, if we can't get the motor started, we're kind of screwed already. We're in a bad spot out of the gate. All right. Let's hold the fires. Let's see. Yeah. Electric start too. Boy, that's nice, huh? A little electric start. It's better than the old ore setup. Man. Wow. That is so nice. Okay. Start getting the rest of this gear in there. Make sure we have it as we go through. But I think yes. everything's here. All right, so. motor's locked and loaded. All right. Let's hope that we don't need these. One. The brothers are allowed just 40 pounds of personal gear each. They will carry compound bows, each with a quiver equipped with three arrows. A Cabela's Instinct Outfitter tent will provide shelter and warmth. For the purpose of safety, they are bringing with them just one rifle, but are lacking the security afforded by sidearms due to local game laws. The brothers begin with a limited supply of fuel reserves. They're forced to pack efficiently and conserve fuel as they navigate the northern Saskatchewan wilderness. Okay, so we got two jerry cans for the motor and two spares. Yes, and every day we do our 
It's just hours after the drop, and brothers Chris and Casey Kiefer have their gear loaded and have set out on their journey. The large interior lake will be the Kiefer brothers' playground, as long as they're able to keep their transportation in working order. Running north and south, the lake carves through the scores of dense forest miles. The long, winding shoreline is peppered with small bays, allowing the brothers access to thousands of acres of land to scout and hunt. For the coming weeks, the lake will act as the brothers' backwoods highway, offering a means of transportation and what they hope to be a reliable source of food. Their first task is to find a location worthy of building a base camp to call home. She tied up? Yep, tied up. Ready to roll. Okay. All right, let's go find and see if we can get a spot. You just want to spread out and see what we find? Yeah, that's fine. When traveling by way of water, vantage points are few and far between. The brothers are searching for a base camp that offers both security from the elements and predators and the promise of hunting success. The thing is, is if you can penetrate like that first layer of spruce, a lot of times you can get back in here and you find some openings. But there's just nothing back in here. This is all just wet muskeg and Big rocks, black spruce, tight together. It's a lot thicker than it looked like from the edge of the water. I don't think this is going to work out. Oh. Good news is there's a lot of Labrador tea around here. What do you got? You seeing anything? Anything useful? Unbelievable. I thought it would open up, you know. I think we gotta get off the mainland. I think that's the issue. I think if we stick to one of those islands where it should be a little more high and dry. Yeah. Well, the thing too, if we stick with an island, yeah. it's gonna minimize our footprint on the mainland for hunting. Yeah. And also hopefully give us a little bit of buffer from the bears. Well, the, the big thing is if we go with an island, let's try to find one that's like tucked in because I don't want to be out in the middle no. of the big water either because then we're just going to get pounded with weather. I know, but there's all those little islands that were like back here. Yeah. Before we got to this main main section. I don't know, let's just wheel over there and look at one of those because they're tucked. I mean, they're in there tight. This is the first spot we tried and it's a giant lake. So I say we just keep moving and checking, but this is not going to work. Yeah. So, all right, we're burning daylight. Let's find another spot. Well, this is another island right here. So, I mean, this is an actual island. And I it like looked... how, like back in here it is. You know, like it's still an island, but it's back in here. I mean, the, the reality is if a bear's gonna swim to the island, he's gonna swim to the island. But yeah, at least we try to minimize it. You know what it's I mean? Just a piece of mine. Let's see if we can find an open spot. After hours of searching and a failed attempt scouting the mainland, the brothers have located a promising group of islands protected from the brunt of the big water. Dude, this opens up sweet up in here. Oh, this is Check this out. way better. Yeah, this opens up nice. Look at this. Oh, yeah. This is what we want. Look, there's so many different little flat spots up here. I love it already. It's high. The water is like right there. Yes. We have that first buffer from wind. Yeah. And of course, the nice thing about Northern Saskatchewan is lots of wood. We got all kinds of wood. Lots of wood. Lots of dead dry wood, some old man's beard. We got all kinds of good fire starters, so. Oh, this is good, this is it, this is what we need. I love it. Island, we, see. We could put the camp right here. Yep. And we're on an island. Yeah, the tent will be just, just right in here. All right, let's do this. Let's go get the tent. Let's get that thing put up. Let's do it. All right. All right. Oh, we finally got a spot right here. Feel good about it. Lots of stuff that we're looking for right now. We got kind of a wind barrier out here, which is perfect. And I'm super high up in the middle. I love this. That way we don't have to worry about any type of flooding or rain, anything like that. And we're on an island, which is even better. I mean, I know bears can cross it and everything else, but 
it's just a sense of comfort but it feels good lots of dead wood lots of dry I mean just tons of this stuff all over the place so we'll have firewood all the time which is great and uh, yeah I'm excited we, uh, we had to look around a little bit so I think we kind of lucked out on this one all right now the hard work begins gotta set up base camp I <sighs> can't wait well there's definitely a sense of comfort in finding camp here on day one that's uh that's a big step in this process. Anytime you get dropped out here, you want to try to find where you're going to spend some time almost immediately. And I really, really like the spot of this island. We kind of got this island that's kind of tucked in here. We got a little cove. We got some of these little bays like back in here. Some of these little bays that are shallow that hopefully we can find some fish in. But overall, I kind of like the spot in terms of just ease of access we've got areas to the north that we can get to quickly and easily we got areas to the south we can get to quickly and easily and from what I can tell from the air we're almost kind of dead center if anything maybe a little further to the north of the lake so I just I like the spot overall it's a good spot we've got good protection up in there so now it's just a matter about taking camp and kind of getting camp dialed um, you know let's get back in there let's get everything set up and then let's get this process kicked off. So, it feels good to be back in the bush, up north where I belong. Having chosen a worthy base camp, the Kiefer brothers immediately begin their task of turning this cold chunk of ground into home. They begin by clearing the area of brush and debris in an effort to protect their only means of shelter and maximize the few comforts they have to look forward to. As the tent takes shape, the brothers earn a small sense of security, knowing they'll have a shelter for the first night in the bush. They have chosen an island position near the lake's geographical halfway point. This middle ground allows them to branch out in every direction in search of pockets of fish and desirable hunting grounds, without burning excessive amounts of fuel and causing unnecessary wear on their only means of transportation. The threat of bears is always front of mind, but having a 360 degree water buffer will help the brothers sleep a little easier tonight. I'll finish this uh, steak here. Do you want to go get the rest of the stuff out of the boat? Yeah, I can grab the stuff out of the boat, start hauling it up. All right, I'll just keep staking this. Okay. Well, we got camp set up here. We, uh, we've actually got it tucked back in, in this good little spot. We actually chose this tent. It's a little bit bigger, but we chose it because it's got stove capabilities in it. We know it's gonna get cold, it's already cold. But we're getting her in and getting her set up. We got, we got camp right now. Got the weapons out, all properly positioned. I'm so excited, I've never had a base camp like this. This is gonna be amazing. What a great spot, it worked out perfectly. Yeah, it's actually in a pretty good spot, but we got a lot of work left to do. So basically, uh, this is step number one. Shelter's always kind of the first priority. So yeah. now that this is up, we'll turn the wood boss loose. I'll go, go get some wood. Go, go, do, my, go do the wood boss thing. That's my favorite thing to do. Let me guess, you're gonna go fishing. Yes, I'm going fishing. Okay. That's the plan. Great, I'll get wood, you fish. Have fun. The theme for this evening is to divide and conquer. Playing to their strengths, Casey heads north in search of fish. There's a lot of uncharted water to cover and not much light left to secure supper on their first night of seclusion. Meanwhile, Chris's task is to gather as much dry firewood as possible, ensuring the warmth and security that fire provides is always an option, even if the weather turns ugly on them. He immediately goes to work on the abundance of dead spruce near base camp. So I've gathered a bunch of wood and I have found a great spot to set a camp looking at the lake right behind me. And what's amazing out here in the north is there's so much tinder, right? This one here is affectionately called Old Man's Beard. Maybe that's why I like it so much. But it's super dry. It grows in the bottom of all these different pines that are up here, jack pine, spruce, all this stuff, and it grows on it. So it's super easy. And the bonus is usually there's dry twigs in with it. So it makes a great little tinder ball. 
Now the other thing that's around here is this caribou moss. Caribou moss grows all over the ground. I mean, this entire island on top of the rocks is covered with it. So the top of it is super dry and tender, but the bottom is soaking wet. So what you gotta do is separate it, get the wet stuff gone and use the dry stuff. Now what I gotta do here is it grows so much on the ground, you've gotta clear out the area. Last thing you wanna do is light a fire on top of the caribou moss. So this is the perfect spot. I got a great view of the lake. I might even just clear out some of these dead trees so we have a perfect spot here. But in the meantime, first things first, I gotta clear this ground. Casey's fishing toolkit is limited, consisting of two spinning rod and reel setups and just four one ounce daredevil spoons. Well, I'm out here doing a little bit of test fishing, basically. Just found kind of this tight little spot here between two islands. A lot of times it doesn't get crazy deep in here, it gets kind of rocky. You never really know, but I've never fished up here in September. So, done all the way through August, but never actually in September. Just kind of going with trolling just because it's a safe way to try to find fish. If I don't catch anything on the troll, then maybe I'll do some casting. Just see what happens. Can't go wrong test fishing. I don't know if that's bottom or a fish. It sure feels like a fish. Come on, hit it again. Just hit it. fish for the first fish of the trip. This is what dropped is about right here. Success on the first outing is a great sign that the lake will be a reliable food source. But Casey honors tradition. The first fish caught is never the first fish eaten. Chris is not going to be happy because I always let the first fish go. But this is a fish that is worthy of letting go. Holy. There we go. Woo! Man. Well, that doesn't happen too often. When you come out for an exploratory test fish and you end up putting a monster laker in the boat. Look at this fish. Look at that. That's an incredible fish. And just like always, I gotta let him go. Because if I get back, maybe mother nature will get back to me. All right, buddy. All right, I can hear the boat coming right now, which means Casey's on his way back. I was getting, you know, a little bit worried, but not too much. I know he's gonna be dialed in. The big question is, did he catch any fish for us to eat? I got a fire going right now, we're dialed beautiful view behind us, wood stacked for days. If we're gonna be out here for a month, we gotta have wood stacked. I can hear them rolling in right now, so. You know what occurred to me afterwards? Why do I always let him go fish first? Because he always lets one go. So let's hope he caught two. Because if not, he's gonna have to deal with me. All right, hopefully he got one. Oh, you made it back to camp, huh? This is a hell of a front porch you got set up right here. It. Look at that. I mean, that is a gorgeous view right there. It's incredible. I mean, you nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> so you're not carrying any protein. Is it in the boat? No. No? No. It's in the boat. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> Oh. I had to. I always do. I know. But listen, it wasn't. Hoping you catch two. It, it wasn't an eater anyway. Why not? Oh, a big one. It was like a twenty-pound lake trout. Really? Yep. Giant lake. It was a. I mean, a giant laker. All right. Well, I can forgive that because I wouldn't okay. eat that anyway. That's an awesome thing. So. Well, there's definitely fish in here, so that's a good thing. I was thinking while we're out there, we're in a pretty good spot, like base camp wise. Like north end of the lake looks good. Looks like there's bays. South, obviously, we'll have to go down there and adventure and explore, but I think overall to have base camp and be able to break out, spike out if we have to for a day or two, and then just use this as much as we can. We gotta conserve fuel. So 
base camp it here, spike out when and if we have to. I'm good with that, 100%. We got moose tag burning a hole in your pocket. We got black bear tag. Let's go find some animals. And we got a giant lake to explore. Yep, we waste no time. As the sun sets behind the glow of a well-earned campfire, the Kiefer brothers have placed a few key check marks on their list of day one duties. They've established a promising base camp and solidified a significant food source, leaving nothing left to do tonight but soak it in and set a game plan for tomorrow. With the darkness comes the cold. With a new day comes new opportunities to hunt, fish, and explore. To not only survive, but to live in the wild north where the brothers belong.